Hello and welcome to the lesson Hydrogen Overview. In this unit we will start with an introduction about hydrogen followed by a, the description of different properties of hydrogen. Hydrogen is the most abundant component in the universe. It constitutes three quarters of the universe. The presence of hydrogen gas in the Earth's atmosphere is scarce due to its high diffusivity. However, it is abundant in the crust where it is generally linked to carbon. Actually, hydrogen is always combined with, with other elements, which is a drawback when it comes to using it alone. Hydrogen was discovered in the 16th century when Paracelsius obtained diatomic gaseous hydrogen by adding iron fillings to sulfuric acid. However, he was not aware that the flammable gas generated it was composed of a new chemical element. In 1766, Henry Cavendish was the first to recognize hydrogen gas as a discrete substance. Lately, in 17, 1781, he discovered more deeply that this gas produced water when it was born. Therefore, he is generally credited for the hydrogen discovery as a chemical element. In 1783, Antoine Lavoisier gave to the element the name of hydrogen. The name comes from the Greek hydro, that means water, and genes, that means to generate, that is to say, water producer. Let's start by reviewing the different chemical properties of this element. Hydrogen is the simplest element and it occupies the first position in the periodic table. A hydrogen atom consists of a proton in its nucleus and an electron that moves in an orbit around. Hydrogen has an atomic number of 1, an oxidation state of plus 1, and it has an atomic weight of 1.008 atomic units, higher than 1 by the coexistence of several isotopes. From the chemical point of view, the arrangement of a single electron orbitating around a nucleus makes the element very reactive. That is why the uh, hydrogen atoms are combined in pairs to form the hydrogen molecules. Since hydrogen is the chemical element with the lowest atomic weight, its density is very low in both liquid and gaseous state. At the boiling temperature, the density of a liquid hydrogen is 17.8 kg per cubic meter, whereas in normal conditions and in gaseous state, its density is 0.0899 kg per cubic meter. The table here compares the density of hydrogen with other conventional fuels where we can appreciate how light uh, hydrogen is. Additionally, the density can be expressed through the specific weight. The specific weight is the relationship between the density of a substance and the density of a reference substance at the same temperature and pressure. For gases, the reference substance is air, while for liquids, it is water. Hydrogen gas has a specific weight of 0.0696, which make it very light, and liquid hydrogen has one of 0.0708, also consider considerably lighter than water. In this slide, we can see the different phase change temperature of hydrogen, which actually has the lowest boiling and melting temperature, with the exception of helium. The boiling temperature of a, pressure, uh, a pure substance increases with the, temp the pressure applied until the critical point is reached. Unfortunately, the boiling temperature of hydrogen can only be increased to a maximum of minus 240 degrees Celsius through the application of uh, around 13 bars. Due to this extremely low boiling temperature, liquid hydrogen is difficult to obtain as it is a very energy-intensive process. In addition, the liquid hydrogen evaporates very quickly, so the container must be perfectly insulated to avoid any loss. On the other hand, hydrogen is not an, idea, an ideal gas, and it does not follow ideal gas law. Therefore, it is necessary to apply a correction factor into the equation of ideal ga gases to model its behavior, as we can see in this first equation. This correction factor is called the compressibility factor and it can be understood as it is shown in this second equation where V is the occupied volume of the gas, P is the pressure applied and V and C is the specific volume of the gas in normal condition. 
the deviation of a gas from its ideal behavior becomes greater as the pressure is increased, as we can appreciate in this figure. The compressibility factor is a very useful parameter to know the amount of hydrogen contained in a vessel. Actually, for the same amount of hydrogen, as the storage pressure increases, the volume decreases. Thus, the lowest volume is obtained for liquid hydrogen. It is generally known that when a fuel reacts with oxygen, a fixed amount of energy is released and water is formed. This release energy is quantified as the higher heating value or the lower, lower heating value. Gaseous hydrogen sorry, is the fuel with the highest energy content per unit mass as, as it can be seen in the graph for a certain amount of energy. The mass of a, a hydrogen required is only about one third of the mass of a hydrocarbon. For this reason, hydrogen has been widely used as a fuel in space programs where weight is crucial. On the other hand, the energy density, which is a measure of how hydrogen atoms are packed in a fuel, is greater as the more complex is the molecular structure of a fuel. Unfortunately, the energy density of hydrogen is very low and the main consequence is that it takes a lot of volume to store a quantity of hydrogen equivalent in energy content to the same quantity of a hydrocarbon. For this reason, hydrogen containers for storage are normally bulky and heavy. Going now to the concept of uh, ignition energy, which is the amount of external energy that must be applied to ignite a fuel mixture, we should highlight here that hydrogen has a really low ignition energy of 0.02 megajoules, which make it very easy to ignite. Despite its high self-ignition temperature of 585 degrees Celsius. In fact, even a small discharge of static electricity from a human body can have enough energy to cause hydrogen ignition. Moreover, hydrogen has a low electrical conductivity. This means that flow or agitation of hydrogen generate elect electrostatic charges that can produce spark, and for this reason, any hydrogen storage equip equipment must be conveniently grounded. Now we will speak about the flammability range and the flammability characteristic. Firstly, we should differentiate the two limits that defines the flammability range. The lower flammability limit is the minimum concentration of gas in mixer with air, below which there is no flame propagation on contact with an ignition source. On the other hand, the upper limit is the maximum concentration above which flame propagation does not occur on contact with an ignition source. As we can see in the figure, compared to other fuels, hydrogen has the wider flammability range, which goes from 4 to 75%. In addition, it, explosive, it is explosive in a wide range from 15 to 59%. Uh, to, from, sorry, from 15 to 59%. Because flammability limits increase with pressure, even small losses of hydrogen have the potential to burn or explode, which means that appropriate safety measures must be taken when handling hydrogen. The hydrogen flames have particular characteristics because they are blue and almost invisible in daylight. Moreover, unlike other fuels, hydrogen does not emit toxic products when burned. However, hydrogen fires can be visible in their indirectly from heat waves and thermal radiation. And also, in many cases, the flames burn surrounding materials that produce, produce smoke and shot, which are easier to identify. In many aspects, hydrogen fires are safer than gasoline ones because hydrogen rises quickly due to its high flotability and diffusivity. As a result, hydrogen flames are very localized and vertical, and even though hydrogen burns more energetically than gasoline, it does so for a shorter time. Finally, to conclude this part, we will talk about hydrogen enrichment, which is a critical issue in hydrogen environment that imposes special requirements for the materials. Hydrogen reacts very strongly with metallic substances, causing changes in the crystalline network as well as in the mechanical properties that can derive in the initiation or propagation of metallic fractures. The hydrogen attack has two forms of action, surface decarburization 
resulting in a loss of resistance and increase in ductility, and internal decarburization, resulting also in a loss of resistance and ductility in which cracks appear at the edge of the grain. Now, secondly, speaking about toxicity, we should know that pure hydrogen is odorless, colorless and tasteless. Although hydrogen is not toxic, it can act as an asphyxiator by displacing, displacing oxygen in the air. If the presence of oxygen decreases below 19.5%, there is some biological inactivity in humans, while below 12% causes immediate loss of cons consciousness. For this reason, if a leak of hydrogen occurs in an enclosed space, serious problems can occur because hydrogen diffuses quickly displacing the volume occupied by oxygen in air. On the other hand, inhaling hydrogen can generate a flammable mixture inside our body. It can also cause unconsciousness and suffocation and it is therefore necessary to take extreme safety measures and to carry out the instrumentation of the ventilation of the spaces in which hydrogen is stored or manipulated. The different symptoms of hydrogen toxicity are highlight in, highlight in this picture. Thank you for your attention.